Over the years, I've done dozens of different online summits, and a lot of them have come and gone, and some of them, you know, were a great experience, and others were okay, but there was one that stood out, and it was actually not just the conference itself that I thought was amazing. It was the actual organizer, the founder of it, and that's what brings today's guest to the podcast, a gentleman named Philip Duncan. Now, if you are not familiar with Philip, he's actually a relatively new author, and uh, it was really refreshing to see his approach to putting together a virtual summit for authors, and it was a smash success. It was amazing. It helped lift my brand up and a ton of other people's brands in the process. So I wanted to sit down, pick his brain a little bit, if you will, and find out what goes into putting together these author summits. What would possess somebody to devote all their time to it? You're going to find Philip's story very fascinating. And I don't want to spoil too much, but it was life-changing for him in his words. So without any further ado, let's get to the interview. So how long have you been writing and been an author for, if you will? Uh, Yeah, not that long. Um, I remember sitting down to write my very first word December of 2020 and then published my book two months after my second kid was born. Uh, back in April of 2021. Um, So it's very much, I feel like I'm really into it now, even though I'm not like a veteran or anything like that. But what I've learned and been able to, you know, people I've met and things I've learned along the way, I feel like I've been doing it a lot longer than I actually have. Yeah, something I shared in the intro here prior to us speaking was just your the way you put together this virtual event for authors was absolutely unparalleled see i've done i would say dozens of these virtual summits and such and for the fact that you've been in the business for just two years not to you know invalidate you by any stretch but two years you put together something like that what's the secret um i got some help obviously i got uh ray brim big shout out to him he helped me out a lot in terms of i wouldn't have been able to do it without him um and then i think it really just came down to getting the right people on like being able to talk to people like you Derek depker honore quarter just like all these people i consider these powerhouses in the authoring and self-publishing world um so like i would love to say and take like a hundred percent credit for all of it and stuff like that but I don't know, man. I feel like I just kind of fell into it and then it's kind of taken on a life of its own. So you've only been in the business for a couple of years. What possessed you to put together a virtual event? What was like, what was this tipping point? Because obviously being a new author has its fair share of work. Are you crazy? Uh, it depends on who you ask, I guess. <laughs> um, if people caught us talking when we're not being recorded, they'd probably think we're both crazy. But, right, right. <laughs> um, yeah. No, I just, I, I was looking for a way out of my the job I was in. I was working this dead-end nine-to-five. I'd been looking for ways out for a long time, kind of throwing things at the wall, waiting for something to stick. Yeah. Um, and obviously, I needed to be passionate about what I was doing. And I always felt like I wanted to write. I just, I never really took that leap of faith and that jump. And then it's like, well... I finally want to, but I need to. I still need to have some kind of foundation to start a business on if I want to do this full time. And that virtual summits is is exactly what that did for me. It provided me the foundation of my author business, and now I'm able to I work full time for myself doing this. You know, not 24 seven, but this is this is my job now, and I owe that all the virtual summits. Um, and it allowed me to take that leap of faith. And I like to say. We've all heard it. If you want to take the island, you burn the boats. Um, I very much did that, and the virtual summit kind of gave me that ability. So, It was pretty crazy, just this panel of speakers that you had on there, because I know I felt very humble amongst a lot of these giants, and some of them you had mentioned and such. So with that being said, I always find that it's very intimidating to reach out to some of these folks like Derek Depker. I was terrified to ask to come over to interview. Now, you know, he's a pretty good pal of mine. But uh, how did you summon up that courage and how were you able to break the ice with these folks? Because obviously people like Honore Quarter and Derek, myself, we're constantly, 
you know, pitched doing virtual events or investing in this person's business or we'll give you a 50 50 split of this. So how did you get heard above the noise then? Yeah, I think it's a really about when you reach out, you need to seem genuine and you need to be like, I, we all see those emails or those outreaches where it seems very like <laughs> grabby and it's like, you feel kind of gross receiving the email or the outreach. Yeah, it's like, take the bleach back. <laughs> yeah. I, but so when I reached out to these people, I, I thought of it in a way of like, I want to genuinely reach out. And if the answer is no, I want them to at least still feel like they've provided me value in some kind of way, even if they're not going to be on my virtual event. And you'd be surprised, like the people who even tell me no, I get some no's that are like, I really hate to say no because I really want to say yes because you asked me so nicely and made me feel so good. And I was like, okay, that's great. Like, that's way better than a no that you could have given me. Um, but I think just being human and just reaching out and, you know, being genuine about what you're trying to do. And also, I think a huge key for it too is I had a conversation with somebody about this. It's like, I typically say no to these, but because you're telling me it's you're you're telling me it's not a requirement to promote to be on like yes i'll promote and yes i'll be on but people get pitched like hey we'd be on my summit and you have to promote or i can't have you on it's like okay that's not the thing what the my big goal is to have your face and your story and your information and expertise in front of these people if you promote and whatever outside of that that's just icing on the cake yeah it's it, it was all put together really really well i don't recall specifically your email, but obviously if you were able to land an interview for me, then that means that you must have ticked all of the boxes for me where I'm just kind of like, okay, it doesn't look like this guy copied and pasted. It looks like he's actually does know who I am. So that's really cool. So what does your email pitch look like when you're reaching out to people to speak on a virtual summit? Yeah, it's really, I'll definitely do my homework. I'm not just going to, you know, somebody give me a name and be like, all right, well, they look like somebody that could provide me value. I'm not going to go check anything about them. I, I want to, and most of these people too have, have provided me value like in my life or business. Like when I reached out to Honore, she was one of those people that was like, I sh don't hit the sin, don't hit sin. Like, this is crazy. And I know that too like, oh, well, man. Like, I, it's, it's you get, crazy. You get nervous. You're like, and you send it and you go, oh, wait, 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 wait. Hang on, cancel it, cancel it. And then it's too late. <laughs> yeah. It's like, and then you get the yes back. You're like, oh my God. She was like, she's like, you, that was so nice the way you asked me. And I told her, I was like, and this is a true story. I didn't make this up. It wasn't a lie, but it was like, you, your book that at the time that she had, it was like, you must write a book. I was like, it's the very first book I read. And I actually listened to the audio book, but it's like, it's the very first book that I was introduced to that kind of got my juices flowing for wanting to be an author. And I told her that I was like, this changed the game for me. Um, and then, you know, like for you, when I reached out to you, I was like, dude, I've, I've, I've just watched your podcast. I've listened to you talk. I was like, this guy is exactly somebody I want to talk to. And even if he says no, it's like, I don't care. I'll go on YouTube and learn something from him. Ha ha. So it's like, <laughs> I showed you. So it's really, yeah, that's right. It's really just about being genuine um, you know, being a person, it's nothing special. Like I wish I could say I've got this crazy special template that is magic. I, I just try to be myself and, um, you know, if, if they say no, I want them to feel good about what I said, regardless of whether they're on board or not. So let, let me walk this back just a little bit. You know, you've put this virtual event together. You're continuing to run your author business at the same time, which is commendable that you're doing such large projects and successful ones, no less. Um, what was your motivation? Like, why? Why did you decide, you know what? My author business isn't enough work. I'm going to go ahead and put together this virtual conference. Uh, yeah, it's maybe that maybe I am crazy since you asked that earlier. Um, it is a ton of work. And, you know, we talked about this a little bit off air. I'm now back into it and I'm revamping it and I'm, I'm back into the weeds of it. And it's just it could be exhausting. But it's the way I look at it, it's the fast track to make these relationships and with people like yourself or Ray Brim or Honore or I, you know, Derek was somebody else I was kind of nervous to reach out to. And then when I interviewed him, I don't know why. And Derek, if you hear this, I'm so sorry, but like he scared the pants off me for some reason he came off really intimidating. And then he's just, we know he's the coolest, chillest, most helpful guy out there. Super chill. Sometimes um, it's super yeah, chill. <laughs> yeah. He's just, he's just awesome. Um, but it's just like being able to talk to these people, the stuff I learned from talking to people like yourself, it's incredible. It's like selfishly, 
uh, reaching out and having these people on because I know I'm going to learn something um, that I can use. And then I just think it's the best for me right now. What I've seen and learned is the best method for me to get the most information out of experts in front of other people who need help. Um, and if I can get that in front of the right people and enough people and help them, I think it's worth the headache and the exhaustion of, you know, running a virtual summit. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. It's, it, it's, it's pretty incredible. I, I really wanted to, I, I know we kind of tapped on it before, but I wanted to kind of double down on that because maybe there's someone that's listening to this podcast or viewing it over on the YouTube. Um, that says why what what is this how does this pertain to me but obviously you said that putting together this virtual conference was life changing for you am i wrong in saying that no game changer i I feel like if i wasn't introduced to this and i didn't do it and i what i what the things i were going was going through in my life when i did this so it's like for people out there they're like oh this sounds really great for him but i could never do it The transition I went through in my life during the start of this to the time I launched it, I mean, it couldn't have been tougher and I couldn't have had more stuff flip upside down on me. Um, But it's just, yeah, a a complete game changer and life changer, 100%. What went wrong? You you can't, you you just buried the lead on that one. (laughs) So now, now I'm curious what went wrong. Cause obviously I don't future years. You're probably not going to make that same mistake. Yeah, um, it wasn't so much what went wrong planning the summit. But it was what it is. Some things went wrong, but like in my personal life, but like changes. I don't know how family friendly this YouTube channel is. So I'm not getting. You're clear. I'm not gonna get. Okay, <laughs> I, I'm not. Get, I, I won't get into anything crazy. But from the time I started this journey to launching it, I had legal troubles. I left my job without a backup. I sold my house. And I moved in with my mom, with my two kids and my wife. That all happened in the process of me getting this virtual summit together. So it never stopped. So I just had to do it during all this. Um, and for anybody who's had legal troubles, it's ongoing. I still, I'm still dealing with it now. So I'm still having to juggle life and business around that as well. So it's been. I'm hoping the second time around, since I've got a process down and I don't have the same stuff going on, it'll be a little bit easier. Um, and more enjoyable, but yeah, it's been a crazy ride. Do you think that you're going to continue to manage the event on your own, or do you think you'll bring in some additional help? Yeah, um, like I said, I got help from Ray. He he really okay. helped me lay the framework out um, and build the page out and stuff like that. I think now I've got a pretty good understanding and grasp that if I wanted to do it from scratch, I could. Um, some things I've seen that's really interesting is people doing co-hosting these virtual summits. So it's like you find somebody who's willing to co-host with you. So it's like you knock out 10 interviews, I knock out 10 interviews, and we put the event together. That seems really interesting to me with the right person. Um, So for me, that would probably be the next step in that. Nice. I really like the direction that you're going. So now we've really been talking kind of more of an abstract sense of this virtual conference, virtual summit. But anybody that may have never heard of this before, describe what a virtual summit is, how this looks, and... How the heck do you make money on something like that? Yeah, it's crazy. So to me, it just like kind of a brief overview of what a virtual summit is. It's picture yourself going to like a weekend conference to listen to speakers or experts in your field or whatever you're interested in. Like we've all gone to conferences and stuff like that. Picture that, but instead you're in your living room on your couch and you're watching it on Zoom video um, or whatever you know platform. So you're getting these panel of experts and within a, and then you, for the way I do it, I launch it throughout a week so people can watch these experts on certain days without being completely exhausted. Um, and then it gives them the access to, they can do the audio, the video, so it's really accessible. So you don't have to go buy a plane ticket, book yourself in a hotel, go to a conference room in a hotel or something like this is all super accessible from your laptop, your phone, whatever. Um, and in terms of making money, so for me, virtual summits do three things. It builds your list, it gives you income, and it connects you with influencers and like business partners. And to me, those three things alone are game changers. And that's what I mean when I say it gave me the foundation because it did all three of those things. Um, but yeah. This, this really brings up a very good point. And I, I think we have to kind of point it out. The fact that you've brought in 
experts, and I'm not trying to throw myself into the whole expert pool or anything else like that, but you've brought in experts to essentially coach you, but you're getting paid to be coached because people are obviously paying for something through the virtual summit. Now, you made it free to get into the virtual summit, first of all. Where's the money coming in? How are you earning? Yeah, that's right. I feel like I accessed a cheat code here. Um, yeah, so people, it's free to attend because for me, the biggest, my biggest thing is I want I want people on my list. I want to get people on my email list so then I can I can have them. <laughs> I want them. So it's mine, <laughs> my precious. Uh, yeah, they're mine. <laughs> Give me your list. Um, so to me, that's important first, but it's free to attend. But what people can do is upgrade to a premium pass at any time during the event launch. And then what that's going to do is if you get the free ticket, just to kind of break down how it works real quick, free ticket access gives you access to each expert's interviews for that day for 48 hours. After 48 hours, it's gone. Then you got access to the next for 48 hours, you know, whatever through the week. Over the Encore, they're all uh, re like unlocked again for the 72 hours or 48 hours over the weekend. And then they're gone. They're locked away until it launches again. But at any time during that, people can buy a premium pass and it, what it does is just it unlocks everything instantly and you have it for life mm. so that's where the income comes from so it's great for replay value too so i can go and attend this for free but let's just say for instance i've got a lunch date with somebody i might miss my favorite speaker and so then i can go back and watch the replay I, I think it's genius idea not to mention you who now have an email list that you can remarket and retarget through, you know, various platforms, Facebook, Google, YouTube, all that type of stuff. And for future virtual summits, I, I think it's brilliant. Speak a little bit more about email list building, because I think there's a lot of authors that still continue to drag their feet. What's the value in that email list and building that? Well, I think if you're going to run an online business in any niche or any kind of facet, you know, we're talking about authors. I think you live and die by your email list. If you're going to sustain a business and so you're you're constantly needing new leads but what's important to me too with my list is making those connections gives me the ability to give them valuable content like i don't want these people just so i can constantly pitch them stuff to sell like yeah. yes that's part of it but at the same time now i have these people that at any time i want i can go online i can write an email that i find valuable to give it to them in, in hopes that it helps them in some kind of you know form or fashion um, that's huge to me and it's so important especially starting out is getting a list built and then you need to constantly find ways to get new leads in and then make sure you're engaging and connecting with your email list consistently where people are going to forget who you are or they're going to forget why they signed up they're not going to feel connected to you so then when you do have something to sell or offer they're going to be like what yeah. who is this person you know, he's trying to sell me something <laughs> so yeah it's super important for relationships and stuff like that uh, is there any services that you would recommend for doing a virtual conference and for email list building? Uh, so I don't know if services, like I, I host my virtual summits on Kartra and then my okay. my mailing list is MailerLite is what I use just because it's nice. the easiest thing to use. boy. See, that's I, why we get along. Okay. We use the same one. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so it's very user friendly. It's free up to like a thousand subscribers. I recommend it to everybody. Mm -hmm. Kartra is pretty user friendly in terms of building it out and stuff like that. Um, but there are people out there. If you don't want to do it yourself, you can you can get help from people like Ray Brim um, and myself, where we've got templates and stuff built out already, and it makes it pretty seamless. And really, all you have to do then is just get the speakers on, um, which a lot of times is the hard part for people because it's like we were talking about getting over that barrier of writing that email and getting people on that you need on. Um, so yeah, that's what I, that's how I've kind of done it. And that's what I use. So I imagine you probably aren't going to have as much issues in getting speakers this year, since you have the first year to lean back on as an example. Am I right? It's cr it's dude. So right. It's so crazy. Cause it took me now granted. I had that stuff going on when I was reaching out to people. So it took me a while to get 15 people is what I went with on my first one, which is kind of on the, on the lower side of a summit in terms of speakers. Yeah. I found it, it worked really well because I didn't want to push it out to try to get more people. I wanted to go ahead and launch it, work out the kinks, it, give me my pe give me the email, and then I could go back and learn from my mistakes and do it again, which I'm doing now. But dude, you're so right now. I've reached out last week. I've got like eight interviews booked in a one week just like that it's like almost like all the effort i put up front before 
is now paying off. And it, it makes it so much easier for me moving moving forward. So it's huge. Nice. I'm really glad to see this growth. And it's just amazing. Like I said, I've done so many virtual summits and yours is the one that I saw just the most results uh, because there's oftentimes, and I think a lot of authors can probably appreciate this, especially if you're approached about these type of things, you get a lot of opportunities and sometimes they always say, hey, it's exposure, it's exposure, exposure. Great, that's awesome. But I rarely ever see any great results. Yours did really good. What was the name of your uh, conference again? So it, when I launched it, it was actually called the Powerhouse Fiction Summit. Okay. I'm going back, I've rechanged it, and now it's gonna be the Powerhouse Authoring Summit because it, 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 it's in so engrossed with everything, self-publishing, authoring, business building and stuff like that. I didn't wanna feel people, they see the word fiction and they're like, oh, that's not for me because I don't write fiction. So yeah, the Powerhouse Authoring Summit is gonna be the, the second launch of it. Where so. can get authors get more information about it? Uh, they can email me directly at just philip at philipsduncan.com. That's philip with one L. Um, and they can ask me questions um, get more information. I can send them stuff like that. And then, um, they can also go over to my website, which is just www.philipsduncan.com. So excellent. Philip with one L folks, make sure you don't mess this one. All right. right. I've got one last question here for you. And that is, okay. what advice do you have for aspiring authors and self publishers? Yeah. Um, it's pretty simple. I think if it's something that you want to do, just do it. I think this, you know, you hear the thing, the, the best time to do something was yesterday. The second best time is now, today. I, I, I put it off too long and I learned stuff along the way so I don't ever regret things that I've done. I, I always learn from things that mistakes, but I, I would say this is something that you're going to invest in. This is something you wanna do with your life and full time. You have to take action and you know take that step forward and you know get off your butt and quit procrastinating because it's a killer. It's a dream killer. And I don't want to see anybody with that issue because I know how much that sucks. Big shout out to Philip for taking some time out of his day to spend some time with us. What a great conversation. I hope you enjoyed it too. It's super insightful. And I understand not everybody's going to want to put together their own virtual summit. But should the occasion ever present itself and a gentleman named Philip Duncan comes and approaches you to join him, I would say don't pass it up. It was a great opportunity. I enjoyed every minute of it. And I hope you enjoyed that interview. Till later, I, this has been Self Publishing with Dale, and I'll catch you in next week's interview.